Jordan, Christina, do you think that vaginal culture tests are important before breedings? Would this lower the risk of pyometria? No, I don't think so. So when should you have a vaginal culture test done? I think you should have a vaginal culture test done if you've had a history of pyometria in the past. That would be sensible to do it. Or if you've got some kind of purulent discharge going on before you breed or as you're breeding, you should go check for that to get some antibiotics on board. Um, so I'll give you an example here. Human beings, there are some of us who have a lot of extra tests done during our life versus people like myself who just have the standard test done when the doc goes and says, hey, it's time for an annual test. I have an annual test done. What is the outcome of the people who have more frequent tests versus the people who have tests that are more normal like me? The answer is the people who have more tests done have a, less, have a higher chance of getting into trouble than the people who just do the standard test. Why? False positives. They have unnecessary procedures done because the doctor detected something and in fact it's not a problem, but they didn't realize it and they had some kind of procedure done. The outcome is worse if people have more tests. More tests, you think, you know, logically it's like, hey, I'll get all these tests done, I'll have my heart scanned done and I'll be checked for this and, you know, it doesn't, the, the, it may be fine individually and some people will be saved from a terrible outcome because they found something in the test they would not have found if they hadn't have done it. But over the whole big picture, people are not better off, they're worse off having tests done. I think the same thing goes for this. I think you're looking for problems that don't exist. So my answer would be is I would not, I've never done a pre-AI uh, pyometria test, not one time, never done it. Noodle bop, uh, started bleeding on March 29th, test at IDEX vet lab. Uh, okay, so it's gonna give us what you did here. Started bleeding on 29th, March. Uh, April the 11th, ooh, that's late. April the 11th, she was a point five. Well, let's just keep on going. Basically on the 24th, she was an 8.6. You did an AI then, and you did it all the way till then. You did three AIs. All right, so what do I think about that? I think that's fine. I think that uh, that, is, that is a day post ovulation. If it was me, I'd have done it slightly differently. What James would have done is he'd have done his first AI here, and I'd have done, an, that was the 25th, and I'd have done another AI on the 27th, second AI, and I'd have retested to make sure her numbers were in the 20s. That's what I'd have done. You look, you got a litter out of it, so you're fine. The problem is, if you don't do a test at the end, you don't know whether the dog stalled out. And that can be a problem for a lot of people. You mentioned you're available to call. Yes, my number's up there if you want to call me. Somebody's asking if this is a new shade carrier. BB, CO, CO. Yes, that is a chocolate dog that carries testable, which is what I would call it. But you could call that a, you could call that a, uh, um, and a new shade chocolate carrier, we could call it that. The uh, guy channel says, I'm using Gen Sol Labs, I don't know who they are, to do a uh, Okay, so I'm not sure what your question is here, but if your question is about animal genetics, Jen, so I know nothing about animal genetics, you have to do an order online these days. You can send your own sample in. You can take a Q-tip with some blood on it and send that in. You don't have to wait for their sample package to come in. So you can absolutely do it online, same day, get your sample ready, put it in the post. They will get your results about four or five days after they receive the, uh, the DNA sample. So if you send it there overnight, you could have results within a week. And sorry, my phone will stop that. There we go. Sorry about that. Okay, back to what we were doing. Where are we? Here we go. 
Lawrence Levy says, we're the goats. Loves Picasso Denali, my favorite Mando. Yes, I love those dogs too. Uh, another green guy. If a female pups are black, and with a white, uh, black with a white chest from a brindle dad. So that dog is probably KBNNS, copy of Pied, if I was guessing. Uh, sh well, the question is, should I buy the dog? N no. And what would you breed to? Well, if I was going to breed to anything, I'd breed to a non-brindle dog. And I'd probably breed to a pied. I'd probably breed to an SS dog that is not brindle. And that way you get half pieds, of which half are going to be brindles. And the other half are going to be fawns. So you get brindle pieds, fawn pieds, brindles and fawns. That's what I would do. Derek Braveheart, what vaccines do you give your French to one year old? We give them a rabies shot. My vets told me that my boy should be fixed because he'd be paralyzed after five years because NBARC tests said he has one marker for IVDD. Clear of everything else. I proved her wrong after contacting UC Davis and NBARC. They said I, he could be bred. I was wondering your take on this. I've just, I know there's not much discussion about this health issue. Okay. I-V-D-D, invertible disc disease. Uh, invertible disc disease. So it is very prevalent in French bulldogs. 35% of all Frenchies will test positive for one copy of IVDD, which means that about 10% will come up with two copies of IVDD. It really is out there. But you don't hear anything about dogs who are specifically having huge problems with IVDD. I suspect this is a non-issue. However, a dog that has a single copy, bred to a dog that doesn't have any copy, none of the dogs will get two copies of IVDD and none of those puppies will ever have a problem with IVDD. That we do know for a fact. So your vet is full of rubbish on this about the dog being paralyzed within five years. First off, if it had one copy of IVDD, it's not going to get paralyzed because of IVDD. So your vet just doesn't know what they're talking about. So that's the first thing. The second thing is I suspect the majority of dogs who have two copies of IVDD, most of those dogs lead a completely normal life and don't have problems. And why do I think that? Because I get involved in a huge number of breedings, like 7,000 breedings over the last 10 plus years. IVDD to show up, admittedly it's not going to show up in puppies, it's going to be more in dogs that are two, three, four, five years old. But I do get a lot of contact from these people who I've been involved with in breedings, and I'm not hearing horror stories about IVDD. And I know that 35% of all dogs out there have a copy of IVDD. So I know that some of those dogs have had two copies, but I'm not hearing about it. So I suspect it's not a big deal. Kristen Martin, with a fine care machine, when you get a 15 PG, would you wait, an AI, would you wait a day or AI the next day to get a close to 17? Well, oh, good question. So the question here is, if you were at a 15 today, what would the numbers be the next day? They're going to go up about 70%. So the next day, the numbers are going to be about a 25. And that is the range. The option, to me, the right time, if you're going to do a single AI on a, on a fine care machine, a number of around 20 is a good number. It's slap between, somewhere between these two numbers. If you're going to do a single AI, I'd do an AI after a 15. If I was going to do a 2-2, two, two, I'd do one AI here, and I'd do the second AI probably two days later. Um, and then check the numbers and make sure the numbers are 25 plus. So for me, I like to do two AIs two days apart. And if it was a 15, I'd wait till that evening to do my first AI. I like to do my first AI, something around a 17. But remember, a 15 and a 17, they are within a few hours of each other. Uh, Shenia Johnson, I have a pup now four months old, one ear's flopped down. Any idea what, how, why and how to get, that, to get it to stay up? Well, the, the ears were never taped up, presumably, and they stayed flopped down. And because of that, the cartilage now hardened and that ear likely will never stay up. But start taping the ear up, see if you can fix it. You might get it fixed. But the answer is why did it happen? Because somebody was not paying attention or didn't realize they should have taped it up. MJ to do more of these videos but do remember disclaimer here I am not a vet 
I'm not a licensed medical professional. I'm purely a person who's been breeding dogs for the last couple of decades. Any information that you got from this video, use at your own risk. There's nothing implied here, and certainly this should not be used as a substitute for advice from your veterinarian or your medical professional. I hope you enjoyed the video. Come back for more of them. Bye. Come on,